who were your guys growing up? Did you have athletes that you were like your favorites? I did. I mean, I've always been like a Kansas fan because my parents went there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say like the cancellation of the NCAA tournament was like, we were number one. We're the unanimous number one. We were going to win the national championship and it's over now. So I still think we should get a banner, but whatever. So, uh, like Danny Manning was this guy that like, I know he's not a superstar, but like he was a superstar to me in college in 1988 national championship with Kansas and happened to play for the Clippers who I ended up, you know, being a fan of after moving here. Mm -hmm. When I was a little kid, I was in Chicago and the suburbs and like, I was a Cubs fan. My dad would bring me there. And like, I was a, like Ryan Sandberg guy. Oh yeah. And then a bunch of people, Rick Sutcliffe yeah. and Leon Durham and um, the bull or whatever. And uh, I was a Sean and Dunstan guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I loved them at shortstop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He was a baller between him and Mark Grace. There was like a great late eighties kind of connection in the infield. And that connects with like the two teams you're talking about, like the Mets I obviously hated of that era. And that was like, the mid eighties and like that. And also the giants with Will Clark beat them in the 89 uh, division series. Yeah. Uh, I love those guys. I mean, I was a big Jordan fan because I was from Chicago originally before we had to move to Denver. You brought up Mahmoud Abdul roof. I was a huge fan of Chris Jackson, mm-hmm. Mahmoud Abdul roof, roof. And, uh, I remember like getting pretty fired up for him when there was a controversy over whether or not he was allowed to pray yeah. during uh, the national anthem. But also he was just like a beautiful shooter and a beautiful player. Yeah, I, I've been vocal because he was, and it's so weird what you pick up on as a kid, but like I had even heard, you know, during the Chris Jackson days that he suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder and I had it. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh man, that's the only person in sports. There was a couple guys, like I think maybe... Jim Eisenreich had some sort of tick or something. And I remember them saying it was tied into OCD. And I was like, tell me more, like screaming from my seat. Absolutely. Uh, but Mahmoud, for some reason, was very open. And he would like, it would take like 30 minutes for him to tie his shoes. And like, you heard that he couldn't leave the gym till it left his fingertips perfectly. So sometimes he was there till like 2 a.m. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's that's why I love him. He's I'm actually relating to him. And when he was a kid, I mean, I think I most certainly had OCD tendencies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if I had... Uh, the disorder as like clinically defined, but I had like a lot of things where I had to like touch them a certain amount of times or like, you know, evens or odds. And that was, you know, I didn't like talk to people about it, but like when I read his story, like he'd sometimes be crying when he was growing up, like just trying to make a certain amount of like swishes, right? Like, and he like, he, he couldn't leave the psychologically, like couldn't leave the court and go home until he got it right. And I definitely related to that. And I thought it's not quite that extreme, but to the sort of like compulsion. And it's too bad that we weren't able to like talk more about that then, not that they didn't cover it in some of the stories about him. And then he he found some peace with religion. Yeah. And that was interesting too. And I just realized as a Kansas fan, that means you had an Embiid fandom in college. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's so lucky. I know. The Embiid Wiggins year, because they both only played their freshman year. That was like, definitely a possible national championship team. And like the main reason they didn't get to the final four was because Embiid already had back problems and he very understandably sat the tournament out. Yeah. And that's why I didn't really know him that well, because I, I depend on the tournament to sort of get me up on at least the top 10 picks. If it's not, you know, if it's not Wiggins or, you know, obviously like a Zion or something, I have to, yeah. the guy from Cameroon isn't necessarily on my radar as much as it should be. So he, he grew so much in his freshman year. He was like, all of a sudden you saw like, Oh, this guy, he would have been the number one pick if his back wasn't, you know, and instead of Wiggins, not that Wiggins didn't deserve it. I mean, maybe he didn't, I don't know, but like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think, I think the right people knew how good he could be even back then. Yeah. And it was just about like, but is he going to stay healthy? Like, you know, like it is now kind of, he's amazing. Oh, he's amazing. Wiggins. It's so funny too. Cause we, the, as Clippers fans, Ola candy was always right up top for everyone being like for worst first pick. It's like Wiggins truly may have taken, I mean, I guess Bennett also, but both like Bennett was so bad and, and Wiggins obviously hasn't lived up to his potential as much as he should. But I don't think Wiggins is all, I mean, I don't like to talk too much shit about people. Maybe just me being a, like a whim, <laughs> you know, like I'm happy for Michael candy that he got to like be the first 